Okay, let's now focus on this example. Um, this is a game with incomplete information, uh, different than the previous examples we had. The nature moves first, determines the type of player one. It's either the low type or the high type. Then player one observes its type and then chooses uh, left or right. So this is the uh, low types uh, choice. This is the high types choice. Remember the Stekelberg competition? This is exactly that one uh, with different payoffs. So then player two observes the choice of player one, either left or right, but player two cannot observe uh, the type of the uh, player one. All right. So therefore we have two information set for a player two. The question is, what is the perfect Bayesian equilibrium in this game? Well, let's start with what a perfect Bayesian equilibrium will look like in this game. So player one has remembered two types. So there's going to be S1 for high type and S1 for low type. And then player two is going to have a strategy. Um, so let's call it S2. Um, how should I call it? Well, it is, well, I don't know how to call it. Uh, S2. Uh, yeah, let's, let's leave it as, as, as two. Uh, but this S2 is actually what she's going to do here and what she's going to do here. All right. So be careful about it. So let me call it S21 and S22. All right. So S21 is again, either U or D. And S22 is again, either U and D. And then finally, the belief system, right? The requirement one. So how many non-singleton info set I have? I have two. So let's call this mu. And if this is mu, this is one minus mu. And here in this info set, the beliefs can be different in different info set. It's beta and one minus beta. All right. So therefore mu and beta, these are the uh, beliefs. So a PBE is going to look something like this. All right. So let's start by, uh, well, this is requirement one by assigning those beliefs. Requirement two, what is the uh, uh, sequentially rational uh, or optimal strategies for player two given her beliefs? Well, let's first concentrate on this part of the game. So given that player two's belief is beta here, what is the optimal action? Is it U or is it D? Well, given beta, expected payoff of player two uh, by playing U, uh, given beta, all right, is uh, zero times beta plus one times one minus beta, so one minus beta. And expected payoff of player two, if she plays D instead, again, given her belief beta, well, this time it's one times beta plus two times one minus beta. So this is equal to two uh, minus beta. So whatever the beta is, as you can see, two minus beta is always greater than one minus beta. So therefore, the best response for player two, uh, at least to beta, the belief beta, is what? D. So that means this S22 has to be equal to D, all right? So meaning player two should be playing D here. Very good. Do exactly the same thing here. So given mu, what is the best response? What is the optimal strategy for player two? Well, I am not going to go in the long route, but if you just look at the payoffs, playing U is always giving higher payoff than playing D. And therefore, S21 should be um, U. Okay? Or you can just go on the long way and just calculate those payoffs. You'll see U has a higher expected payoff than D. All right, very well. So let's put the arrows because we already, we do not need to make any case analysis here because we know in any PBE, player two should be playing U here and D here. That's nice. Um, and U here. So let's put those arrows. Now I'm going to use the uh, sequential rationality for player one of low type and high type. So the low type guy, if he chooses left, 
he is going to get one. If he chooses right, he is going to get two. Obviously, he prefers to choose right. Agree? I mean, if you want, expected payoff of player one of type low, when he plays left, given that his opponent is playing U here and D here, uh, because he's playing left, he's going to get payoff of one. Expected payoff of the low type uh, player one, when he plays R instead, given that his opponent player two is playing UD, right, is going to be uh, two. So therefore, the best response for player one of low type to his opponent's strategy UD is nothing but R. So that means S1 low type should be playing R. Good. There's only three things we need to find, S1, H, and mu, and beta. All right, so do the same thing for high type. If he chooses left, remember uh, the player two is playing U here, so he's gonna get three. If he chooses right, he's going to get two. So therefore left is the best response. So S1 high type is in fact going to play left. Perfect. So a perfect Bayesian equilibrium is the following. At least it has the following structure. Left here, um, right here, and uh, UD here. Well, what about mu and beta? So they have to be uh, Bayesian consistent, right? But what is on equilibrium, off, off equilibrium info sets here? Uh, well, let's look at the strategies, left and right. So low type is, uh, was it the low type? Well, oh, the low type is playing right. Uh, I'm sorry, okay, I put the arrow here. And then the high type is playing left, uh, which I didn't put. Okay, very good. So is it a possible, is it possible that if these players play those strategies, uh, let me take it back, I'm sorry. Given that players play those strategies, are these information sets on the equilibrium path and off the equilibrium path? This is what I'm going to determine. All right, well, the low, oh, so this info set, uh, I can come up into this info set, uh, so just look at the arrows, all right? If the high type plays L, and in fact, the high type is going to play L, right? The high type is going to play L. So this is high type, by the way. High type, let me write it. This is the low type because uh, I may get confused. So if high type plays L, which he will, uh, we can reach to this info set. Don't forget nature determines low and high with some positive probability, all right? So I assume that Q is greater than zero, okay? So for any Q, this information set is gonna be on the equilibrium path. Very good. By the way, if Q was zero, obviously this is not incomplete info set, right? Because it means uh, uh, player one is just high type. Well, what about this info set? Well, this time this info set can, is going to be reached because the low type is playing right. All right. And we know that Q is a positive probability. So therefore both information sets can be reached with a positive probability. And therefore, both info sets are on the equilibrium path. Both info sets are on the equilibrium uh, path. Sorry, my equilibrium looks uh, horrible. So what does that mean? We have to use requirement three, not four. Well, according to According to requirement three, uh, mu has to be what? Beta has to be what? So let's figure this out. So remember, this is mu. So mu is basically the probability that ending up at this decision note divided by probability of ending up at this info set. So what is the probability that and probability of ending up at this decision note? It is probability that player one is gonna, low type is gonna play left, 
and probability that he is in fact low type, which is Q, divided by um, probability that high type, uh, this is low type, so the high type plays left, times probability that uh, the, the player one is a high type, which is one minus Q, plus obviously probability that low type plays uh, left times Q. Um, by the way, I know it's just, uh, 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 I am just trying to be formal here, but I think it should be obvious. If you just follow, don't forget, nature puts arrow both here and here because both of them are positive probabilities. So according to this, if these are the strategies, uh, the, the likelihood of ending up here must be zero and here must be one. And so mu must be zero. And the likelihood of ending up here, if you just follow the arrows, it's one and ending up here is zero because a high type is not gonna play right. So therefore beta has to be equal to one as well. I mean, mu is zero, beta is one. I just want it to be formal. So here, let's just verify this. What is the probability that the low type is going to play uh, left? It's zero, all right, so zero times Q zero divided by, so therefore this is zero as well. What is the probability that high type plays left? One times one minus Q. So it's just one minus Q, but zero divided by one minus Q. Oh, well, obviously I assume that Q is not one. So it's zero. Okay, that's it. Well, what about beta? You can do it in the long way, but as I told you, beta has to be equal to one. So conclusion is the following. In this game, uh, there is a unique perfect Bayesian equilibrium. And I'm going to argue why this is unique. A unique perfect Bayesian equilibrium where player one high type plays left, uh, low type plays right, player two plays u here, d here, and mu is equal to zero, beta equals one, meaning player one, I'm sorry, player two believes that he is in this decision note whenever he observes uh, uh, action low. And whenever he obser she observes action right, uh, she's gonna think that uh, uh, player one is the low type, okay? Uh, well, why is this unique? Well, the uniqueness comes from the fact that when we checked requirement two, uh, the best response of all the players were unique, right? Only one strategy was best response. So, uh, if, given the other strategies, if only one action or one strategy is best response, if there's no indifference, I mean, player one is, 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 is uh, best response is either this or that, so we don't have this, only one strategy is best response, and that's true for all the players, well, therefore, the equilibrium must be unique, all right? And it's this one. So here, uh, another thing, obviously, is the mu and the beta value. So we do not have like uh, any mu is, uh, is, is, uh, uh, is, is okay or any beta is okay. And that's simply because um, both info sets are uh, on the equilibrium path. And so we can use the Bayesian consistency or requirement three to pin down an exact value for mu and beta. All right. So... In PBE, multiplicity can arise because multiple strategies are best response, which isn't the case in our case, or multiplicity can occur because multiple mu's and betas are the case, and that's usually the case if requirement four is in place, meaning some information sets are off the equilibrium path. But in this case, in our case at least, both information sets were on the equilibrium path, and so we pinned down the exact values of mu and beta, and hence, uh, the PBE in this example is unique, all right?